This video is for week four and it covers chapter five on Excel objects. There are plenty of information in this week's uh, instructor notes as well as a discussion thread on objects and what they are. Uh, because we're using VBA and Excel, the chapter focuses on Excel objects, but objects are an important concept to get a handle on for any type of programming since the majority of programming languages in use today are object-oriented languages. Uh, this chapter also serves two purposes, one being uh, if you end up using Excel or VBA on the job, uh, this chapter does a good job of explaining the different Excel objects that are available to you. Uh, if you don't use Excel but go on to do programming in other languages, the concepts you learn here uh, regarding how to use objects and how they interact with each other will be helpful to you. You may have noticed when writing the code for the first three weeks assignments that whenever you type the name of an object and then place a period after it or a dot, the auto assist feature will drop down a list containing all the different functions and properties of that object. Uh, before we get started on any of this week's projects, uh, if you hit F2 in the Visual Basic Developer, it'll bring up the Object Browser. This is a useful feature of VBA which allows you to see all the possible objects you could use uh, and which functions and properties are associated with them. So in this case I've hit F2 and brought up the Visual Basic uh, Object Browser. And If I look at Range, which is one that I believe we've used before, you can see all the functions and properties associated with a range. Now, in this screen they call them classes. Uh, an object is actually an instance of a class. You can think of the class as the blueprint uh, for how to build an object. So the range class is the instruction on how to build a range object. So each time you dimension a variable as a range, you're creating a new instance of a range object. And the different things you can do with a range are allocate changes, apply names, autofill, auto filter, etc. And you can see the different properties as well, uh, which are things like cells, borders, address. On page 164, the application object is discussed. This is an important object, especially if you ever end up developing solutions in Excel with VBA, because the application object will allow you to do anything programmatically that can be done in the Excel menus. For example, if you go to your options menu in Excel and would like to enable or disable calculation, set the width or height of the window, uh, determine whether or not to display the formula bar, uh, the default file path where your documents would be saved, all of these are different properties that can be set using the application object. You can also, uh, if you have calculations set to manual, you can use the calculate function to recalculate all the cells in your sheet and screen updating is another uh, interesting one because if you have a program that takes a long time to run you don't want the user to have uh, to experience a freeze up or experience a lock up while your programs running so what you can actually do is enable or disable screen updating so that the screen doesn't freeze during a long calculation Another useful object is the range object, as discussed on page 174. You may have already used the range object in the assignment you did with the face to output things to a certain range in the worksheet. However, the range object can also be used as a collection. Instead of specifying one cell, you can specify multiple cells, uh, in which case the range becomes a collection object. You can do things like auto fit the columns, make the font bold italicize a section, change the background color of a section all by using the range object. In almost any type of programming that you'll find yourself doing, uh, rarely will you ever be working with a single piece of data. You're usually going to be working with a list, uh, an Excel spreadsheet, perhaps a set of records returned from a database. And anytime you have a collection of similar objects and you can store them in some type of collection, that's very helpful. Of course, you learned last week about loops and how you can loop through and iterate over the same code repeatedly. Uh, there's actually a special kind of for loop called a for each which will allow you to loop through a range or any other type of collection automatically. For each loops are discussed on the bottom of page 179 and then on page 180 uh, the author shows you his uh, sample for this which is the change colors application. 
So each time you hit the button on this spreadsheet, it'll randomly change the color for cells A1 through B15. One thing that's a little different about this example is the type of button that the author used. Rather than using the ActiveX button, he used a form button. And the difference between these is as follows. If you double click on the command button in developer mode, it takes you to the subroutine for command button one click where you can enter the code. If you're trying to figure out how the other button works, uh, you can click on it in design mode and it does the same thing that it would do if it weren't in design mode. The reason is this is a form button and what the author's done is put his code in a subroutine of a module and then he simply goes to assign macro and chooses the name of the program he wants to run because as we saw earlier uh, a macro is really just a set of code that's placed in a module. Looking at the code for this application, you see the public subroutine called cell colors. It's a subroutine, not a function, because it doesn't return a value. It just changes the background color of those cells. The author begins by dimensioning a variable called my range, and rather than being a string or a number data type, the type of this variable is an Excel range. He then declares another variable called my cell, which is also an Excel range. He randomizes the random number generator. He sets his range equal to A1 to B15, which are the cells that will be changing. Then he uses the for each loop to loop through each cell in the range automatically and set the interior background color to a random color and there are 56 different possibilities here. If you have time, I'd encourage you to take a look at the Battle Cell program. It's the author's version of Battleship. And in this program, you get to see a lot about how to manipulate ranges, how to use Excel objects. One thing I would mention is if you have a 64-bit system, uh, you may need to add this public declaration to get this program to work properly. Because this does use some Windows DLLs, in order to play sound. Uh, it's slightly different the way you need to code it for 64-bit systems. So as you can see, I've beat the computer at Battleship. And one of the reasons that it's so easy to win this game, despite the fact that there is a lot of code behind it, is that there's no intelligence built into this code. Actually, one of the assignments uh, that you could do this week, the eighth challenge, which is not part of your assignment, uh, is to design an algorithm for adding intelligence to the Battle Cell program. Uh, and at the end, the author says, this is a tough one, so be sure to take plenty of time designing your algorithm before writing any code. This will be very, very challenging to do because it's easy to create this game. Uh, it's a more complex program than the other ones we've seen so far in the book, but it's still a relatively small amount of code. If you look at the function here, uh, this is what the computer uses to determine uh, which peg he puts in or to determine which cell he's going to choose to take a guess where your battleship may be. As you can see, it's just generating a random number within the range and randomly selecting cells hoping that it finds one where you have a ship. Uh, what the author asks you to do in question number eight is to eliminate this set target cell function and create your own called computer fire which includes more intelligence. So some of the things you would do if you had to do that assignment would be to uh, write some code that said if you find part of the ship then continue to hit cells around that. 
until you've completely sunk the ship then move on to the next one that's just one example uh, really any strategy that you might use as a human player or that you might use against a human opponent you would want to try to write down in code so that your computer opponent could be as competitive as possible the last thing I'd like to show you this week is what your assignment should look like when it's done there are three short problems you can do them all in one sheet and this is probably the least code you know right for this course it's a very short one as far as the coding part goes for the first part we have a button when I click on that button it asks me to enter a caption for this window when I enter that caption you can now see instead of the default file name being displayed at the top of the window it puts whatever I entered if you maximize this window it's then shown up here at the top For the second part, when I click on different cells, a message box pops up telling me which cell I've clicked in. And finally, if I enter text into a cell and then hit tab or click on another cell, the font is changed to red and bold.